Hey everyone, welcome again to more Layers. I'm Seth Mariano. And I'm Jordan Smith, and we are almost two months into the year already. Right, it's like uh, mid-February. Um, the night we're doing this is the 21st, February 21st. And, uh, and so we've just um, pretty much worked our way out of Super Bowl 57, which I spent at Jordan at the house he's living in with our mutual friends and uh, uh, had a really good time just uh, uh, watch, uh, watching the game ate good and uh, talked about all kinds of stuff like you know something that was interesting just a little bit ago I saw uh, on my YouTube recommendations there was uh, an episode of a GQ series on YouTube um um, I don't know if you're familiar with it called Actually Me. I am not familiar with it, no. Yeah. Basically, a um, bunch of celebrities, they uh, create sort of undercover accounts on the internet and respond to you know, people's questions and comments. And in the thumbnail, you know, I bring this up because in the thumbnail, you know, you go, you see it being recommended or something. You'll see he's looking at a comment that says, Andrew Garfield, Garfield, this is the particular one. He's looking at a comment that says, Toby was the best Peter, Andrew the best Spider-Man, and Tom the only one decent at both. I bring that up because, um, you know, we were talking about, about Spider-Man and comparing Spider-Man actors, I kind of brought up. Uh, my personal ranking of the three and uh, me and what that guy said in that comment sounded, it reminded me of what you said. Yeah, I did say something very similar. I was saying how Toby Maguire was a really good Peter. Andrew Garfield was a really good Spider-Man and Tom Holland was a combination of the two. I don't know if I'd say he was the only one who was decent at Peter or Spider-Man. But it was, I guess I should say, is a solid performance. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also mentioned Holland was my personal favorite. And, and you know, everyone uh, one might kind of have a uh, have a unique opinion on on what made each one's work and on what order they they rank in. But, you know, that's just uh, personally, I prefer Holland over them all. Oh, sure. And for a lot of people, it could be a reason of nostalgia or it could just be the one that they grew up with. And of course, Tobey Maguire, he was a lot of people like their first live action Spider-Man. So it would make sense if they immediately thought of him when thinking who was the best one. Uh, yeah, it, it can really depend on which one you saw first, which one you grew up with. Yeah. Like uh, with the live action Batman actors, I would still say Keaton is my favorite, uh, but I do have a soft spot for Val Kilmer. And that may just be because I grew up watching the movie where he portrayed Batman. Yeah, that's fair enough. So I, I, it could be the same thing with the actors who have played Spider-Man. Yeah. yeah. Had I never seen Holland's films, I probably would have struck with my old favorite Maguire uh, just because of his uh, innocent Peter Parker portrayal. But, you know, and then after, uh, after, you know, this probably shows you how out of touch I am compared to a lot of my peers. But uh, not that it bothers me, but it's just interesting how um, I'd never really watched the Holland flicks until um, I was getting ready for the latest one, No Way Home, by watching the earlier two films. Because my brother was going to be in town for Christmas and he wanted to go see it, wanted us to go see it all together or something. And so we watched the for earliest two entries. And so, uh, and over time, I really, really grew like a particular fondness for Tom Holland's Spider Man. Sure. Yeah. I, I do remember um, Spider-Man being in these more recent movies was a huge deal. 
because uh, anything Spider-Man really is owned by Sony as opposed to Marvel. Granted, they're still technically Marvel characters, but Sony has the rights to them. So when they confirmed in a Captain America Civil War trailer that Spider-Man was going to be in it, people lost their minds. Like in a positive way or a more negative? Oh, it was definitely a positive way because by no means did Sony have to say, yeah, we'll allow you to use Spider-Man in the MCU. But they did allow it, and when they revealed him in that trailer, people got really excited. I, I can guarantee you, if you go to YouTube, you can find compilations of people's reactions to seeing Spider-Man in that trailer. Well, I guess it, the buzz has been good so far. So uh, I think, uh, yeah, okay. Um, so we'll, we'll just uh, move on now to um, the um, sort of big topic we had planned for today. And it's um, something that may seem kind of late to some people in their minds, but uh, but with um, uh, with the uh, early off season being like the time around things like the draft and the NFL scouting combine, it is to a degree relevant. And um, we're talking about football safety. Mm hmm. And, of course, when, especially right now, when people think of football safety, one of the first things that will come to mind is the whole incident around DeMar Hamlin. Yeah. Of course, um, as most everybody probably long knows by now about uh, the DeMar Hamlin incident uh, during the penultimate game of the Bills regular season in Cincinnati, and he, when he suffered an intense blow to the chest from an opposing player, which left him unconscious for a good chunk of time, and and he was hospitalized for a good chunk of time after that. Well, what ultimately happened is after the contacts, he actually got back up for a few seconds, but then he just immediately collapsed again. And apparently he suffered some form of cardiac arrest. People were debating whether or not that contact triggered it. I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case, but I don't know for sure if it was what caused it. By the way, his heart pretty much stopped. And they worked on him giving CPR, I think they said for about eight minutes, which can leave you with permanent brain damage, but... By some God-given miracle, he's back on his feet, and by the time the Super Bowl came around, he was walking on his own. And as some of you may have noticed, he actually made a special on-the-field appearance at the Super Bowl shortly before kickoff, yep. surrounded by, I think, a, like a bunch of the medical staff that helped him. And it was like, like this big, grand uh, uh, moment of excitement and celebration. Mm -hmm. On national television, for a guy, he, a guy who probably wasn't even even a, a Pro Bowler or All Star by any means, but they're just celebrating that this guy beat the odds and survived a scary close call. For sure, and I definitely applaud them for bringing him out on the field, but I also applaud them for bringing in the first responders or the people who helped uh, get him back on his feet at some point. Because really, if they weren't there with the knowledge and training that they had to help him at least get to the hospital, he may very well have died on the field. Very and likely, I then, think so. What? Just saying very likely, I think so. Yeah, for sure. Really, if it hadn't been for them he probably wouldn't have been seen at the Super Bowl. No. Yeah. No. Just uh, the fact that they took the time during, like, uh, their biggest, most prestigious, most celebrated event uh, to honor him in that way, I think that was cool. Absolutely. I uh, completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so now, you know, uh, the news of the incident itself you know, probably I mean, leaves um, some maybe parents who have kids who are participating in football or even maybe parents who have kids who are thinking about getting into football probably uh, concerned about uh, uh, do I really want to allow my kid to do that or or do I want want to allow my kid to continue in that because of of that on top of of the con- the concerns and the studies and the reports about concussions and CTE which basically for those who aren't familiar, it's basically long-term brain damage that results from repeated blows to the head. Predominantly, I think, according to new statistics in traditional tackle football. Right. Even the CPR they were giving him would have had similar effects if it lasted long enough. No, I, no, I can't. I'm not sure what a lot of um, my parents are probably thinking at this point if they have any more confidence than they would have had before the whole Hamlin thing about whether 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 it's safe enough, whether they can that they can trust the protection that is there, and so and you know there was. You know the reason I came up with this um, with this topic for this time, and you know, I was low on ideas, and I came across a headline on on one of the major news websites uh, talking about something that Hamlin himself is actually doing. It's a sort of initiative of with the American Heart Association to promote CPR training, and it teaches hands only CPR which some of you, a lot of you out there have probably taken elsewhere in the past. And yeah, it's, it's a good, uh, hopefully this will promote, uh, promote awareness and uh, help, help people be better prepared to handle future emergencies like this. Absolutely. In fact, uh, um, I found something similar where after yeah. that whole incident, there was, uh, there was a law proposed in Pennsylvania to have a type of defibrillator at school sporting events. And I was thinking that's a smart idea because injuries or just medical emergencies in general can happen at any level of a sport, whether it be high school, college, NFL, or even earlier than that. Uh, so I was thinking at the very least, maybe have some form of medical personnel, medical staff around at pretty much any or all sporting events so that they can respond to any immediate issues, regardless of if it's a younger group playing the sport or some high up league like the NFL or the NHL or the MLB. Because God forbid that happens at a high school game or a middle school game or what have you. And they don't have someone on staff to help them; they could very well lose their life. You know, that kind of got me thinking. You know, you know, injuries don't just happen in tackle football. I, well, I've heard of you know of people getting hurt in in the MLB and the NHL. It's really uh, not something that can be totally escaped unless you don't play any kind of sport at all, or frankly, even. Or unless you just pretty much don't do anything, even remotely close. And even then, doing absolutely nothing can be harmful to you after a while. Yeah. But um, definitely with sports like baseball or hockey, if nothing else, you have a fast-moving projectile flying straight at you sometimes. And if it hits you in the wrong spot, that could end your career, if not your life. Like, I could never be a pitcher or a catcher in baseball simply on the grounds that, like, if I was the pitcher, if I threw it 
and then it was hit directly back at me. I don't know if I'd have enough time to move out of the way. Like, I don't know if I'd have a fast enough reflex to dodge it. And with a catcher, of course, you always have a baseball flying at you at 70, 80 miles per hour or something like that. It's like, yeah, you got the gear and you got the the big glove, but if something goes wrong, it's game over. <laughs> Not just the game, but even more than that, possibly. Absolutely. Ouch. Yeah, so... I think maybe if they're not doing something like this already yet, they should maybe have some medical staff like like within their peripheral vision supervising everything, you know, on the sidelines, whatever. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And they probably already do that. Well, we may not know, but it – but it would be probably something to consider if it has if it's not being done already. Yeah, I'm sure there's some areas that have already taken action or precaution, but it's not as widely practiced as it probably should be. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe some of that has to do with, you know, um, the uh, well, people recalling, you know, now, a lot of these athletes, they religiously work out, they lift weights, they, they put all this physical conditioning work in, and what could go that wrong? But, uh, but really, even with that, a lot could, apparently. Oh, absolutely. No matter how fit you are, you can still suffer from injuries or medical issues. Some of that exercise or whatever may minimize a lot of those things, but that doesn't outright guarantee that it won't happen. Yeah. Well, well, even the NFL, even as we speak, is looking mm -hmm, to make it better. There. And I have put another link in our notes here for the NFL player health and safety page. And a couple links on them focus on foreseeing and responding to medical emergencies. These, there's a page that shows link to pages reporting on, on the league's efforts to better anticipate incidents and protect players. Things like using computer data to calculate what athletes typically experience when injuries occur. And improving equipment, as some were probably aware of. Yeah, yeah I'm glad they have that page set up because I think especially the NFL would have the resources to actually go through with these things. So if they can improve the equipment and have better knowledge of what the players are going through and how to properly respond to these kinds of emergencies, they may not be able to stop everything from happening. Like, they probably still can't guarantee that no injuries will happen or that no one will suffer a medical emergency while they're there. But the more precautions they take, the more appropriate precautions they take, the better off they and definitely the players would be. In a way, I think it uh, probably helps reduce that uh, what I – have been seeing as kind of this old stigma of like the NFL is just this malicious business empire that has absolutely no respect for people's safety or health. And they just want, uh, want to make money off of killing people or whatever. I feel like I, I'm not sure that's accurate. I think, I think they're trying to do better. And even with, even even with the dark stories like like what you might see in stuff like the movie Concussion with the research of Bennett Omalu, I feel like that could be looked at as a cautionary tale about well, why you don't play football, or it can be looked at as, as a stepping stone to a better future for the game. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm on board with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I'm not going to go into detail about um, the uh, AHA initiative or the player health and safety. I just want you guys out there to you know, well, look at the links, which I'll put in the description and kind of do your homework for yourselves. And I think I'll just leave it at that, you know? Yeah, it's good to stay educated on these things. So I definitely recommend checking out those links. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put those in the description. And um, and in the meantime, um, as you probably know, if you've been with us for the past few episodes of this, uh, we've adopted a new kind of side B segment, if you will, of more casual, well, little or idea questions. In this case, more of an icebreaker or small question of sorts. In this case being, if you made your own millionaire electronic game, who would you use as phone-a-friend lifelines for the players? Uh, now, to explain that a little bit better, I don't know if how many of you are familiar with, like, the CD-ROM games of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. If, if Jordan, did you ever play any of those? I don't know if I ever played any of the CD-ROM ones, but I would find the occasional one online, or if I was watching the show, I might try to guess what the answer was. But, yeah, I, I never personally had the CD-ROM version. That probably gives you an idea of how old both of us are. We <laughs> we are aware of its existence, so we're pretty old old people in that way. But uh, yeah, I um I remember being younger and having a copy of of the CD ROM at home, and um, and whenever you use the phone a friend lifeline, um, Regis would sort of call a friend of his is to get their opinion on what the answer was. So uh, so it wasn't exactly like on the TV show where you could choose somebody not to call and ask for help, but they would, um, but Regis would kind of pick a friend of his whom I guess he thought would probably know it. Yeah, I mean, obviously with an electronic one, you can't exactly use it to call someone in real time, so... That right. definitely makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, um, so I was thinking if if I were like like the creator or the virtual host of something like that, who who would I call for certain kinds of questions? And um, I'm sure you have a list down that you put together. I did. Yep. Or I do. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, what do you got? Uh, going from top to bottom, the first thing I okay. thought of was if I had questions surrounding sports, I would go to our either our mutual friend Tyler Nursinger or some of my coworkers where I have my job because a lot of them they uh, invest a lot into sports, sometimes financially, sometimes they're just really interested in it. Uh, so I feel like they would have some knowledge, but definitely our mutual friend Tyler, he is from, excuse me, mm. uh, from last I knew, he was greatly interested in being like a sports newscaster, sports commentator, that sort of thing. And he has definitely displayed some sports-based knowledge before. So I feel like he would be my go-to for that. Yeah, Tyler has actually in the past done some like sports writing for some time for a nonprofit that the the three of us and others are involved in, and in, for autism awareness, a nonprofit organization in Rochester called Campaign D. Yep. And Tyler's also part of the Artists Unlimited theater program we do, and has definitely shown. Um, I think an extensive knowledge in that area. And I actually said the same thing as part of my list uh, for sports questions. I put down yeah, Tyler. I also put that down. Yeah. We both figure since we've seen 
his extensive knowledge of sports, he would be the person to go to for that sort of thing. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so what else did you have? For the subject matter of music, I thought of a handful of people, and the two highlights I want to bring up yep. are both also associated in some way with uh, Artists Unlimited, that being our artistic director, Mr. Wagger, and the man who usually is helping him, Mark Dupre. I've known both of them for many years, and I've seen the musical talent that they have. They sung in the same group before, and obviously helping out with these musicals, they have some music-based knowledge. So I feel like they would be reliable sources for music-based questions. Sure. Uh, for movies, I feel like there would be a handful of people I could talk to, especially when it depends on what kind of movie it is. But in general, I'd go with another one of our mutual friends, Andrew, specifically Andrew Deacon. Um, for those that aren't aware, he is a big fan of movies. He has an entire YouTube channel dedicated to reviewing them. And he wants to go into making movies at some point. So I figure who better to reach out to than the person who wants to get into the movie business. Yep. And Andrew is one of the uh, family of mutual friends of ours whom Jordan is staying with currently mm -hmm. or living with. And uh, uh, he and everybody else was there, there. Um, for the Super Bowl, and when we watched Willy Wonka over there at their house, yes. um, along with um, along with Andrew's brother's fiance, um, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, yeah, and so Andrew is also a mutual friend of ours. I also uh, put him down along with somebody else, whom I'll get to later for the subject of movies. I'll come back to that later, but uh, I'll go on ahead and let you um, let you go on. Okay. Uh, the next subject matter I thought of was art, and I thought of two people, one being another mutual friend of ours, Sammy, uh, but also somebody I knew in high school. Uh, I don't know if she'd want me to say her name simply because on social media, she usually, she, she usually goes under a different name, so for her privacy, I won't actually say her name. But these two are both incredible artists. I've seen a lot of Sammy's work. It's really good. She can draw highly detailed stuff in a very short amount of time. And this other girl, she's the exact same way. They just have this incredible artistic talent that I'm sure they're familiar with a lot of the techniques and the terminology that may be used. Art history. Maybe something different. I'm not sure. But I would definitely go to one of those two if there was a question about art. Sure. Uh, for if there were questions about gaming, I would either reach out to my brother, Steve, or my brother-in-law. Because uh, they, they play a lot of games, sometimes together, sometimes not, uh, depending on their personal schedules, but they are definitely good at the games they play. Um, maybe if, um, if it was like Xbox or something specifically, I'm sure they would nail it. Maybe I'd do better at something related to Nintendo, but gaming in general, I definitely feel like I could rely on these guys. Sure. For mathematics, I thought of my brother-in-law again, or my sister, and quite possibly even my brother. I thought of my siblings because they're both some form of engineer, which can often require a lot of mathematics, especially depending on the kind of engineering you do. And my brother-in-law, he's 
almost literally a rocket scientist of sorts. So that alone can require countless amounts of mathematics. So I feel like any one of those three, they would be able to do some quick math in their brain or write some stuff down if they had to, depending on the time limit. But yeah, I, I feel like they would be really good at it. So is your brother working in engineering? He is a computer engineer. Yeah, so well, maybe that's kind of like what I'm doing, but a step up or so I have, would have to guess. <laughs> maybe it could be just a different branch of the same thing. Well, I work as a computer support assistant for school district, and um, but I feel like well, his field has got to be kind of a whole nother world. Could be. There's bound to be some similarities, though. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Then I thought of finance, which kind of seemed unlikely for a millionaire game, but you never know with the show. But mm -hmm. I would definitely reach out to my mom because she has always been incredible with anything financial. Like if I struggle with something, I usually go to her being like, how does this work? Or what do I do to qualify for this? How much should I put down for this or whatever? She would definitely be my pick to go to and to go to for anything financially related. Like she's just so knowledgeable in that field. I feel like I could definitely count on her. Now that can be overwhelming to deal with, you know, you know, oh, I just recently, I just recently got promoted you know, to my current title, computer support assistance. And I've had to, I've had to deal with a bunch of financial documents uh, sure. that I didn't really look that much at. I, uh, I won't, I won't say who to, but I had to, and pretty much turned to somebody else. I felt like I couldn't handle it myself. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I got a few more here. Uh, the next one, if there was a question about like superheroes or comics, whether it be about superheroes or not, I would go to my friend Tom. He is widely knowledgeable in the field of superheroes and he has collected quite a few comics before primarily from what i've seen about spider-man but he definitely has more knowledge on superheroes than i do so if there's something about comics or heroes that i would be stuck on i could probably go to him yeah. you know there's a comic book shop just um kind of like a couple miles or so kind of perpendicular down the street from um, the office where I do a lot of my work in now. Mm -hmm. I've never really, um, I've really gone that close to it, but uh, it's just something that popped in my head as you were saying that. Yeah. Comic book shops can be fun to go into, especially just to see what kind of things they have. You don't even necessarily have to get anything, but just the wide variety of options that they give you is incredible. Yeah, I imagine. For sure. I uh, got three more here. Uh, for the third to last one, I was thinking if there was anything that was related to, say, history or current events or something around wars or westerns, I would have definitely reached out to my dad because he loved that sort of stuff. He watched a lot of history-based documentaries, maybe. I, there was definitely one called Victory at Sea that he liked to watch. Um, he watched a lot of war shows, a lot of westerns. And he would definitely be invested in a few current events. So I definitely would have gone to him about any of those things. I can't necessarily do that anymore because, unfortunately, he's no longer with us. but. If he were still around, he would be my go-to for that sort of stuff. Was he into like um, um, like dramatization, like war films, like say Saving Private Ryan or something like that? 
Well, Saving Private Ryan specifically, I'm not entirely sure, but he would watch ones similar to that. Oh, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm asking. Sure. I know one of his favorites for a while was one called Master and Commander. So Yeah, that doesn't ring a bell, but, uh, yeah, but it may be good. I don't know. Then I thought of TV shows, whether it be live action, cartoon, or anime. And this one was actually pretty difficult to pin down because ultimately it could just depend on the show. Like if it were some cartoon, maybe I would reach out to somebody who I know has seen that cartoon. Same thing with the anime, because I know some people will watch certain animes and other people watch other ones. Whether or not I'm familiar with them is a different story. But if I knew someone who had seen a specific show before or likes a particular genre of show, then I would reach out to them. But when it comes to TV shows in general, it ultimately just depends on which one. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. And for my final one, this is just a sort of miscellaneous category, but I actually thought of you, Seth, because I know um, you've expressed interest on being on the show Jeopardy, which is a yeah. very difficult trivia show, but I know you have a wide array of knowledge, and of course, with every episode of this we do, it's clear that you do extensive research. So I'm like, if there's a general question that I don't know the answer to, I'm going to reach out to Seth. Well, I'm honored. Thank you very much. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Now, I had quite a few of my own. Okay. And the first, the first one at the top of the list that I put down, down was the subject of classic rock. And I thought of, of my younger brother, who is who studied music production in college. He is a sort of independent musician, has his own little production company down south. And like, you know, like if you were to go, like go at least when I've gone to visit him down south, you know, uh, he's had like a shelf full um, of records. Some of them like classic rock, like Huey Lewis and Simon and Garfunkel. And... And take and I, I remember sitting in the basement with him on occasions, listening to you know, music like Fleetwood Mac and Foo Fighters and Huey Lewis in the News, and 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 take and he was he showed a big enthusiasm for Beatles music when we were younger, and 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 I feel like he has such. A big knowledge of classic rock that I think, I think I would want him maybe to be the one on, to help my player if they were looking for help on a question like that. It makes a whole lot of sense. I've seen, uh, I've met him once. Yes. But for my interactions with him, I definitely would say he would be able to help in that field. Yeah. And then I thought of of mathematics as well, and I thought of my dad, who actually has past experience teaching math specifically to school kids, and he did that and did that for a, a good chunk of my life before moving on to school district technology. He's kind of like the boss of that now, uh, where I'm working, and and. He knew, knew so much math that's kind of like his forte, more or less, I think. He'd be the fit for that one. Now, what level of math did he normally teach? When I was younger, younger he taught at a high school in our area. Um, but I think maybe he might have taught a variety of grades at different times, but... Uh, I do specifically remember him teaching high school math when I was growing up in elementary school. 
So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if he, if he's actually taught the subject, why not ask him about it? Yeah. And then and I thought of the topic of psychology and and that's the sort of field my younger sister whom you've also met has studied has studied in that's kind of what she's studying in college she's working toward a a degree in social work okay, at a local college and and you know uh, i see her uh, sometimes bring home psychology related textbooks or overhear her talking about something of that kind of concern so oh, i would i'd go with her for that now, is she trying to be a psychologist specifically or something connected to it? I think, well, her major is specifically by name social work. So I would think social worker, which uh, might entail well, more or less the same stuff. But uh, I'm not really totally clear on that. But, uh, but it's social work that is really her major technically. By the way, it seems like she's knowledgeable in that field. So... Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And then uh, I put down and down. I thought of the topic of um I was trying to think of one for my mom, you know, to be fair, to represent everybody. Sure. And then I thought of of maybe my mom could help with something related to historical fiction. Like I've seen, like I know sh lately she's been streaming shows like Call the Midwife or I I'm not sure what the other one I'm thinking of is called. Something like The Last King of Scotland or something, something which is, uh, I think maybe some of it is based on true history and maybe some of it is historical fiction, that kind of stuff that she's into. Mm -hmm. So, so for her, for my mom, historical fiction there. All right. Yeah. And, and and it's cool that you tried to get everybody in there. That's really nice. Yeah. 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 And then, in fact, the very next entry, the very next bullet point, if you, you might have noticed, is anime. And for that, I said you, Jordan. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know how... I guess I was thinking of, you know, you know, your um familiarity with Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z and and uh Naruto might have come to mind a little bit as well. And so and so well, well naturally based on like our our conversations and probably what I've seen on your own past YouTube, um I thought um you're the guy for that maybe. And I I am very, very honored. Um, my extensive knowledge of certain anime usually is involved in ones that a lot of people know about. Like you said, Dragon Ball Z, Pokemon, Naruto. Uh, Sonic had an anime, so of course I watched that. Uh, but I know uh, some people in college or I've been to several conventions that have a lot of anime characters. So I could probably answer a decent amount of stuff i obviously wouldn't know everything but i would still very much give it my best shot yeah yeah and then um for film which was one of your things earlier uh, for film i said i also said andrew deacon like you did mm -hmm. yeah and yeah and hill shape box the um i think his uh passion for film in general but I also said um, one other mutual friend of ours, or whom you more recently met, met though I've known him for a longer time, mm -hmm. Colby Dick. Yeah. Okay. He, he is a, he is a film student currently um, in a college in Georgia, and I think and also does uh, his own YouTube, analytically discussing a lot of films. Hmm. Occasional video game, but mostly movies, and you know that's uh, that's his thing, that's his passion. So, and I feel like uh, he has an extensive knowledge on 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 technical terminology and 
uh, what goes into making a quality cinematic artwork. So, so yeah, Colby or Andrew. And I completely agree with that because really, like Andrew knows a lot about movies in general, whereas Kobe seems to, from what you're telling me, know a lot about the technical side of movies. So depending on what the film-based question is, you could go to either one of them. Yeah. Smart move. Yeah. Yeah. I'm taking then, then like you did earlier, I also put down um, the category of art. And for this one, I thought of, of another mutual friend of ours whom we haven't mentioned today, okay, who's also been involved with Campaign D and with Artists Unlimited as well, Jenna Diskin, mm -hmm. whom, uh, who um, studied art history at a local college and has actually done some artwork of her own, own that she's posted. And so... I I, th I think I could count on her for that. Yeah, she's drawn quite a bit. Sometimes she drew something for me, or uh, she's written her own stories and will usually provide her own illustrations for that. So yeah, she, she would definitely be a good a good uh, person to go to about that sort of thing. I think so. Yeah, and then uh, for um. Let's take, and then for sports, it's pretty much the exact same that you said, Tyler Nursinger. We've kind of already talked about why, right. Tyler. But, and then, um, and then I didn't say necessarily music, but more specifically music theory. No. And so, now, and this is where I I could probably, uh, depending on what specifically. Related to music theory, the question would be asking about. Um, I would pick from a small handful of people, and there was the aforementioned Carl Weger, or uh, my dad, who has who has some musical experience of his own. He he like played keyboard in music ministry when I was younger. My brother, of course, whom the aforementioned musician. And our creative arts pastor at the church you and I currently attend, Brian Pulowski. I've heard Brian, and you know, oh, make specific references during rehearsal on one occasion or another to like, like sharp flat chords or or something like that. And uh, uh, Mr. Wager, I'm. I don't really remember why. Maybe it has something to do with, you know, my experience being in one of his music classes in middle school. Mm -hmm. And so I guess for all of that reason, it it could go to either of those four. Well, it, it, this is kind of similar to when you had uh, Colby and Andrew for film where having multiple people that know different aspects of the same thing would give you plenty of options of who to reach out to depending on what the question is. So having four separate people, that's really good. Yeah, I think you're right. For sure. And then a similar... Oh, well, not well, maybe not a similar, but uh, simple... Um, category, category and go-to person, um, current events, so like uh, current news, that kind of thing. Right. I think, I think my dad, because I, I know he regularly watches the evening news, like, like night in and night out. So, uh, like, he regularly sits down to do that, and so uh, I figure, simple, go to my dad for that. I was about to say, if he's watching the news on the regular, then he would be up to date on a lot of what's been going on. So that would probably be the most logical choice then. Yeah. And then I had just one last one, comic book heroes, which I guess we kind of covered a little bit ago. To some degree. And yeah, I guess so. And so well, this is another one of, it could be, a handful of people, 
example. And I guess it depends on what specifically is being asked. It could be either my dad, my brother, other my brother isn't isn't into as much MCU or Marvel Studio property stuff as my dad is. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, he does like you know, my brother has expressed a fascination with things like Spider-Man and Guardians of the Galaxy. And my dad is like every now and then recommending something that Marvel has put out. And okay. you you and Colby have shown a pretty big interest in that as well. And our creative arts pastor, Brian Pulowski, is like one of the biggest fans of Marvel Studios that I know of. And so I think for all of that reason, it could be any of those five. Sure, absolutely. And again, I'm honored that I was included in that list. Yeah. Uh, granted, my superhero, comic book hero knowledge is more extensive than in uh, Marvel than, say, DC. But uh, I do know quite a few things still. Um Especially if it was about Spider-Man, because he's my favorite hero. Um, I've loved watching all the different Spider-Man movies that have come out with the three actors that we've talked about. Um, Venom, probably my favorite comic book character aside from Spider-Man. and Just favorite Spider-Man villain anyway. Um, so yeah, comic book heroes, I depending on which ones... I could do well with, especially if it was something connected to Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. So the odds are a lot better if it were Spider-Man related. It would be better, yes. Although I could still uh, give a decent shot at other stuff too. Yeah, maybe. So, um, yeah. Well, that's going to do it for now, and. Um, and feel free to tell us, you know, your thoughts on football safety and, and and the question of the phone a friend, whatever we talked about. And keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google Podcasts. Yeah. Well, not Twitter, Anchor and Spotify. And, um, and uh, you know, send us your comments, your questions, thoughts, whatever, and just enjoy. Yeah, get involved with us. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, if, if you did make your own millionaire game or whatever, or if you were on the show and you needed somebody's help, who would you reach out to? Even if it was somebody you don't know personally, if it was a celebrity or something to that effect, let us know who you would want to make contact with to answer various questions. Because that alone would be something that we could talk about together. And the more involvement we have, the more investment we have from other people, the more engagement we can get and the more exciting it will be. Yeah. You know, that brings up an interesting thing to my mind, you know, on at least a couple of occasions on the actual millionaire TV show, you know, celebrities have been enlisted as phone friends. Oh, either. I guess it's because maybe that maybe the contestant had personal connections to them. That would be my first guess, but but yeah, yeah it's um it's interesting. Sure, I, I'll, yeah. I'd have to look into that because I didn't know they could actually do that. Yeah. yeah so um, yeah, that's pretty much um, gonna do it for now, and um. We'll see you soon, and uh, you all take care now. So long, everyone.